Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the gala dinner for the 12th BAMP Congress on Allograph Pathology. The lights are bright enough that uh, I can't really recognize any of you, so any extremes of behavior you may, may wish to engage in, <laughs> I, I won't really know who's doing what. Um, I have some things to tell you that I think you'll be quite pleased to hear. We have in the course of this day uh, decided a, a number of things about the future of uh, the Banff meetings and we also have come to know that some of you have questions which we can quite easily answer. First of all, uh, the 2015 meeting it's probably about a 90% chance that it will be in Vancouver, but it's not 100%. If it is in Vancouver, it will probably be in February of 2015. The 2017 meeting, there's about a 78.5% chance it will be in Barcelona. <laughs> And uh, we, we believe that that's likely where, where it will be. We're very enthusiastic about that. Um, we've had a recent uh, entry of, of a Plan B, and we can immediately um, um, activate this Plan B. It helps with our uh, negotiations quite a bit. So I won't tell you what Plan B is, but it'd be another very, very desirable Destination. So if anybody gets too tough with us in the negotiations for 2015 or 2017, we will threaten to activate Plan B, which would be just as good as Plan A. Now the other thing is, I think a lot of you were confused by the guy giving you that very complex presentation about the Banff Foundation. And uh, there are some simple things to tell you. First of all, there's no membership. You don't need to join the foundation. You, 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 it doesn't really change things for you. It changes the leadership of the uh, organization of future meetings. It makes it easier for us to raise funds. It gives us more uh, strategic and uh, succession planning. It's a very uh, healthy thing for the future meetings, for, but for those of you coming to the meetings, it doesn't change things much, except perhaps making the meetings even better than they already are. Each meeting seems to be better than every preceding meeting, and that's true of, of uh, this meeting today. Um, in many ways, this is already destined to be the best Banff Allograph Pathology meeting we've ever had. <laughs> And the subsequent ones in 2015, 17, 19, 21, and so on. You know, we overheard Dr. Mengel planning the 2048 meeting. Now, I thought I was the only one interested in uh, the singularity and, uh, you know, the things likely to happen around 2045. But apparently he is also interested in this. And he's actively planning this Singularity Banff meeting around 2045. So, very pleased to see him doing that, so I, I don't have to. Now, the, we have noticed something that's really missing from this meeting, and it bothers us a lot that this is missing, and that is that there have been no complaints whatsoever about the meeting. So I'm about to rectify that. Because I really don't think that it would be a normal meeting if there was no complaints. But if there are complaints, you need somebody to complain to. So I want to provide you both with something to complain about and someone to complain to. It's a complete and satisfying circle, unlike most things that happen to you in life where there are some loose ends here, there are no loose ends. So you may wonder about the hat that I'm wearing. Or, if you don't wonder, you could start to wonder now. And the decision to wear this hat was negotiated with one Stefan Hubscher. Only with him. And so, 
If you don't like the hat, you have someone to complain to, and that is Stefan Hubscher. Okay? He is entirely responsible for this. Now, it's not just a question of hat versus... <laughs> it's not just a question of hat versus no hat. Because there were multiple potential hats, and Stefan chose this particular one. Now, a certain significant person in my household back home told me that this alternative hat was the hat that goes with this outfit. But that's not the hat that I'm wearing. So the other thing you could complain about, rather than just complaining about the hat, is that it's the wrong hat. Not only that you're upset about the hat, but it's actually the wrong hat. And then you may notice that I'm not wearing a tie. And this is a gala dinner. So, <clears throat> here is the tie that goes with this outfit. Once again, this is the approved tie by certain powerful people in my household back home. And so, uh, I, I just want you to know that it's here. So you could also complain that although the tie exists, I'm not wearing it. You're really upset about that? You can blame Stefan for that too. Okay? <clears throat> now, at, at, at this point, I need to query Diaza and see if she wants me to keep on talking because you're all eager to hear about David Crippen and Kim Solez and then the secret member of your own group who is the next best thing to David Crippen because David Crippen couldn't be here. So, Diaza, do you wish to speak at this time or should I keep on going? <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was better to lie down because after some kind of music with me. Okay, it's so just... Me to read, so. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues from the local organizing committee, Dr. Christina Catherine, Dr. Liz Gavinet, I would like to thank you all for coming to this meeting. We recognize that for most of you coming here would, uh, could have been an absolute nightmare involving long hours of travel. To this we say, we say that to arrive in paradise some sacrifice must be made. So, uh, and if you are here 22 years later, after the first BEV meeting, it's due to the initiative and scientific vision of two people whose thinking was much ahead of their time. Of course, you all know that I'm who I'm talking about, Lorraine Hackusen and Kim Solis. So, uh, thanks to the solid foundation that they built, we are now able to improve and expand our knowledge within the area of allograft pathology. Uh, the BAMF classification is the most widely accepted classification system for solid organ uh, allograft transplantation. Um, First and foremost, I would like to thank Kim and Lorraine and all the members of the BAM Foundation for trusting and encouraging us to organize this meeting. Uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the people that collaborate with us in making this meeting possible. Dr. Denis Glotz, who gave us tremendous support. Uh, Mr. Nandra Inagaki, Inagaki, our local secretary. Mrs. Juliana Irana from LCA Turismo Travel Agents. Uh, Professor Vanessa Alves, the professor of pathology from the University of Sao Paulo, who strongly encouraged me to organize this meeting. Dr. Denise Maledos, who took over my routine responsibilities within the hospital, especially for the last week where I was deeply involved so with, in, with putting this group together. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, the hotel staff that helped greatly in trying to solve all the last minute problems, Marcio Gian, Juliana, Emanuela, Susani, Nathan from the audiovisual, 
and Camila Alexandre. Last but not the least, I, I, we would like to thank a lot Ms. Akshata Hugover that uh, from 2008 has been helping the birth mating organization emailing, every, emailing everybody and I would share with you that this notice that yesterday Akshata was accepted as a medical school at Alberta University. So in recognition of her wonderful work for the birth uh, meetings, uh, we'd like to offer her these flowers. Akshata, please. And wish you all the best, and we deeply uh, hope that in the next few meetings we, you'll be, you can be here attending as a delegate, maybe. <laughs> so now we invite you all to dinner and enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Thank you. So could you frame me again? Next. I think she liked it. Yes, yeah. yes, I, I think so too. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, I wanted to tell you about uh, Douglas Rushkoff's book that is called Present Shock. You, you, you know that in uh, 1970 there was a book, Future Shock, and the idea was that, you know, the future was coming so fast that it was hard to cope with. The problem is now that many of us are tremendously focused on the present. And we're kind of like stuck in the present. And it can seem like the concerns of the present are, 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 are so all-consuming that it's hard to make plans for the future and hard to figure out what the future would look like. It said in this book, um, Present Shock, that there, there, there is no narrative anymore. We're all sort of making up our own stories. As, um, and there are many uh, other things that, that, that make it hard for us to function. So now, I was thinking that to stimulate you to, to think about what transplantation pathology could be in the future, that the idea of David Crippen and the, the contrast between him and me is probably not sufficient. That we need a third person, somebody who's here. So let me first tell you a little bit about him. It's remarkable, there are many of you from the University of Pittsburgh and yet you don't know David Crippen and he's probably quite unlike you. Let me tell you a few facts about him. His guidance counselor in high school told his parents that he was retarded, so little could be expected. So unlike all of you, whose parents probably had high expectations, David Crippen's parents didn't really expect much of David Crippen. He flunked out of one college, he was kicked out of another for uh, disciplinary problems, and he then served in Vietnam, and he came back, and he would have been a laboratory person like us, except that accidentally, at the University of Georgia, he had an interview for medical school, and a powerful person in the medical school thought that although his grades were absolutely atrocious, that there was something of promise in the guy, and that the, they should take him in medical school. And uh, he, unlike me, rides a motorcycle. He, unlike me, has his own rock band. 
Now this is not just a rock band that performs at medical meetings. This rock band performs at the House of Blues, many other places. He knew most of the significant figures in the 60s and the 70s personally. He participated in all the interesting things of that period of time. He's about my age. He's probably aging more quickly because of all his activities in the 60s and 70s. What does he represent? To a certain extent, he represents uh, the, all the things that um, I have held back from doing. He and I began email discussion groups around the same time. He began them in critical care me medicine. I, I began them in renal medicine. We just talk about medicine. He talks about everything else. He talks about politics as jokes. He, he um, uh, annotates his uh, motorcycle rides. Okay, so now let me tell you about Wei Chi Wong. Wei Chi Wong is here among you, a bit like Clark Kent. You can imagine if Clark Kent were here, that uh, just looking at Clark Kent, you wouldn't know he's really Superman. So how did I meet Wei Chi Wong? On October 16th, 2000, Barry Brenner, the most famous kidney physician in the world, was being honored at a meeting, and uh, there were a number of speeches. And just like tonight, there was a bit of distraction. Many of the speeches, people were clanking glasses and making noises with their knives and forks. But Wei Chi Wong was wearing a startling red dress, and when she got up to speak, the whole place got eerily quiet. You could hear a pin drop. And she proceeded then to roast Barry Brenner. And she had only been a fellow of Barry Brenner's at that time for three and a half months. And she immediately got job offers after this. <laughs> it was a very amusing thing. It, it, and uh, she showed supposed naked pictures of him, um, and uh, as well as, as letters of greeting from Bill Clinton, Al Gore, a number of other significant people. And uh, the video from this still exists. So I, I believe that uh, Putting those three personalities together, the boldness of uh, Wei Chi Wong and uh, of David Crippen and Kim Solis and uh, Lorraine Rackison <laughs> would, would maybe prepare us for uh, the future. Now I've tried to surprise you tonight, but I think what I'm looking for is for you to surprise me that um, I've suggested to you some ways in which our discipline of transplant pathology could change over time to include tissue uh, engineering, organs grown from stem cells. Um, you know that famous video where Martha Stewart is feeling an uh, explanted lung? Uh, with the idea of tuning up uh, explanted organs before they're implanted. I would like you to think of other ways in which we could expand what we do and uh, extend our reach and increase the longevity of our field and uh, the BAMF Foundation. So. Um, I, I, I hope you would think about that. I, I wonder if uh, Wei Chi Wong would, would like to come forward so you, you can all see her in the light here. Into the light, Wei Chi! <laughs> come on, Wei Chi! <laughs> okay, another time. All right, thank you very much. Have a, have a wonderful evening.